So this is one of two sound walls that I've put together that can be used in my sixth grade classroom. This first one is the consonant chart. And so this is going to be consonants in the English language. On the left hand side of the wall, you have the type of consonant that, it, that there is. So for instance, a stop, a nasal, fricatives, a fricus, glides, and liquids. And then it also tells the person using it or the child whether the consonant is, um, or whether the consonant's phoneme is voiced or unvoiced. And so unvoiced on mine is in purple and voiced is in orange. And so then across the top, it gives the person using this board or the child instructions on how the consonant is formed in the mouth. So we have lips together, teeth on lip, tongue between teeth, tip of tongue behind top teeth, lips rounded, tongue pulled back, back of tongue lifted, and then back of throat. And so the examples that I have given on my board I do have some smaller words that students may have learned in the younger and lower grades, but because I have a sixth grade classroom, I chose some bigger words that my students might find more appealing to them. Because if I were to present this to them as a sixth grader, they would be like, this is crazy. I'm in sixth grade. I don't need to know this. When in reality, even though it is more beneficial if all grade levels are using a sound wall, I can't believe that it is completely lost on a sixth grader and especially one that might be struggling with um, phonological awareness. So I chose words such as um, picture um, to be unvoiced or banana as far as voiced in the stop. Um, some other words that I chose for um, tip of tongue behind top teeth is t turtle but also cut, cotton, and then of course, dog. I like to start with something simple that they could, you know, oh, I know what that is, just with instant recall, but then build up as I go down the list to something more difficult that gets more on level, such as sled or sound for the Ds. Um, those are just a few examples, but I've also, for instance, on the fricative, we have elephant or we have valve. Those are ones that you would have for voiced and unvoiced fricatives. And of course, we get into bigger words as we go to the affricates and we have words like catch, catch up. Or in the j sound, we have magic or fudge. So, that is my consonant chart, and yes, I geared it towards sixth graders because I would like to use this for my students, especially that are already struggling with phonemic awareness. The other sound wall that I have created is the vowel valley. And in this wall, again, I've catered it to sixth graders because that's what I am currently teaching and have been teaching. Um, the outlook is still looking like that's where I'm going to be for the next few years. So I think that this will be beneficial in there. And so we have to know that it does create like a valley, and that's why we call it a vowel valley. But we start with each of the vowel sounds being listed. And so if we have a line over the letter, or for instance, E with a line over it, we know that that vowel says its name or that it's the long version of that vowel. If we find a little um, half circle or like a U shape over it, we know that that is the short sound of the vowel, such as I for the I. Um, we also do have some that do not play by the rules and we would call those the schwa sound. And so many times they will mimic the short I or the short U sound. And again, we have bigger words such as gallop or banana or system those would definitely fit in the sixth grade language um, but then again we have other vowel sounds that we may not usually think of so like the ooh or the uh and distinguishing how the lips and the mouth make their shape 
to form the sounds. And so it's giving students a picture of those. And we've also included diphthongs and controlled vowels by the controlled R, such as er or R or or. And so I think having this board in the classroom for students to be able to visualize these things is going to be very helpful, especially when we find those students who are struggling to create the proper sounds. Um, one of the other things that I have done on this particular board is left space to add words. Because as we go through our sixth grade curriculum this year and we start finding words that either don't play nice and go up here in the schwa area or even ones that we could add to ah or uh sounds, we can add those on this board. And so the kids also get a sense of, yes, this weird thing's hanging in my classroom, but I have a sense of ownership in it because I've added to it. So not only have I looked at it, not only have I tried it, but I've understood it because I'm also putting active input into this board wall.